I am writing this urgent message because I was once a witch. I lived by the stars as an astrologer and numerologist, casting horoscopes and spells. I lived in the mysterious and shadowy realm of the occult. By means of spells and magic, I was able to invoke the powers of the controlling unknown and fly upon the night winds, transcending the astral plane. Halloween was my favorite time of year, and I was intrigued and absorbed in the realm of Wiccan witchcraft. All this was happening in the decade of the 60s, when witchcraft was just starting to come out of the broom closet. It was during that decade of the 60s, in the year of 66, that a woman named J.K. Rowling was born. This is the woman who has captivated the world in the year of 2000 with four books known as the Harry Potter series. These books are orientational and instructional manuals of witchcraft woven into the format of entertainment. These four books by J.K. Rowling teach witchcraft. I know this because I was once very much a part of that world. Witchcraft was very different in the 60s. There were a lot fewer witches, and the craft was far more secretive. At the end of that spiritually troubled decade, I was miraculously saved by the power of Jesus Christ and His saving blood. I was also delivered from every evil spirit that lived in me, and I was set free. However, as I began to attend fundamental Christian churches, I realized that even there witchcraft had left its mark. Pagan holidays and Sabbaths were celebrated as Christian holidays. As time went on, I watched the so-called Christian churches compromising and unifying. I also watched with amazement as teachings from Eastern religions and New Age doctrine began to captivate congregations. It was a satanic setup, and I saw it coming. Illuministic conspirators were bringing forth a one-world religion with a cleverly concealed element of occultism interwoven in its teachings. In order to succeed in bringing witchcraft to the world and thus complete satanic control, an entire generation would have to be induced and taught to think like witches, talk like witches, dress like witches, and act like witches. The occult songs of the 60s launched the Luciferian project of capturing the minds of an entire generation. In the song Sound of Silence by Paul Simon and Garfunkel, we were told of seeds that were left while an entire generation was sleeping, and that the vision that was planted in my brain still remains. Now it is the year 2000. All of the foundations for occultism and witchcraft are in place. The Illuminists have to move quickly because time is running out. It was the communist revolutionary Lenin who said, Give me one generation of youth and I will transform the entire world. Now, an entire generation of youth has been given to a woman named J.K. Rowling and her four books on witchcraft, known as the Harry Potter series. As a former witch, I can speak with authority when I say I have examined the works of Rowling and that the Harry Potter books are training manuals for the occult. Untold millions of young people are being taught to think, dress, speak, and act like witches by filling their heads with the contents of these books. Children are so obsessed with these Harry Potter books, they have left television and video games to read these witchcraft manuals. The first book of the series, entitled Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, finds the orphan Harry Potter embarking into a new realm when he is taken to Hogwarts, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. At this occult school, Harry Potter learns to obtain and use witchcraft equipment. He also learns a new vocabulary, including words such as Azkaban, Cirque, Draco, Hermes, and several others. These are real names of devils and demons. These are not characters of fiction. How serious is this? By reading these materials, many millions of young people are learning how to work with demon spirits. They are getting to know them by name. Vast numbers of children professing to be Christians are also filling their hearts and minds while willingly ignorant parents look the other way. The titles of these books should be warning enough to make us realize how satanic and antichrist these books are. The aforementioned title of the first book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, was a real giveaway. The second book was called Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, while the third was entitled Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Nothing could be more obvious than the Harry Potter books being pure witchcraft and of the devil. This is the oldest con game ever hatched out of hell. As a real witch, I learned about the two sides of the force. When real witches have sabbats and meet in a coven, they greet each other by saying, Blessed be, and when they part, they say the force be with you. Both sides of this force are Satan. It is not a good side of the force that overcomes the bad side, but rather it's the blood of Jesus Christ that destroys both sides. High-level witches believe there are seven satanic princes, and that the seventh, which is assigned to Christians, has no name. In coven meetings, he's called the Nameless One. In the Harry Potter books, there is a character called Voldemort. The pronunciation guide says of this being, he who must not be named. On July 8th at midnight, bookstores everywhere were stormed by millions of children to obtain the latest and fourth book of the series, known as Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. 
These books were taken into homes everywhere with a real evil spirit following each copy to curse those homes. July 8th was also the 18th day, three sixes in numerology 666, from the Witch's Sabbath of Midsummer. July 8th was also the 13th day from the signing of the United Religions Charter in San Francisco. Now we have learned that the public school system is planning to use the magic of Harry Potter in the classrooms, making this public schools centers of witchcraft training. What does God have to say about such books as the Harry Potter series? In the Bible in the book of Acts, we read the following in the 19th chapter, verses 18 through 20. And many that believed came and confessed and shown their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now let's find out what some children have to say about the Harry Potter series. These are some comments from young readers of the Harry Potter wizard books, quoted on a new video by Jeremiah Films. On the video called Harry Potter Witchcraft Repackaged, Making Evil Look Innocent, author Robert McGee explains, Children as young as kindergartners are being introduced to human sacrifice, the sucking of blood from dead animals, and possession by spirit beings. Courts have banned the teaching of Christianity in public schools, but Wicca, which is recognized by the U.S. courts as a religion and given tax-exempt status by the IRS, is taught freely. Harry Potter has become the method of introduction of Wicca to the very young. Harry Potter materials have become much more than a handful of children's fantasy books. Warner Brothers, Coca-Cola, Minute Maid, and Mattel have used the Potter materials to launch games, puzzles, toys, backpacks, and every possible merchandising product. Scholastic, a major supplier of public school teaching aids, has added the Potter literature to its line of curriculum materials. When the name Harry Potter is keyed into the Scholastic website, it returns 268 matches. Jesus returned only 23. Once introduced to the world of wizard spells and dark arts, readers of Harry Potter can advance their knowledge and skills in witchcraft and paganism by viewing hundreds of websites available on the internet. Or they can purchase more books on the subject from the well-stocked Wiccan sections in local bookstores. Or they can find over a thousand volumes on witchcraft available at Amazon. Harry Potter books have taken the world of children's fantasy literature by storm. Over 200 million have been sold in 40 languages. One study shows over half of the children in the Western world have read at least one of the Potter books. Many reported rereading each book several times. But is it just fantasy literature like Snow White and Cinderella? In the Harry Potter video, cult expert Carol Mastarasiano points out that in the older stories, evil never prevails. There are no absolutes in his world. What is right depends on the situation. Witchcraft now has a complete packaging. Starting in kindergarten with Harry Potter and TV witch shows, children are led on to the horror movies and hundreds of Wicca and pagan websites. When they thirst for more power, high school and college Wicca covens are available. And in the adult world, corporations are now hiring New Age practitioners to provide seminars and sensitivity training, stress relief, and self-improvement for employees. Former Satanist William Snowlubim points out in his book, Wicca, Satan's Little White Lie, that I finally learned, in the most graphic fashion imaginable, that the difference between witchcraft or Wicca and Satanism is actually non-existent. Before he was saved, he found himself cruising the streets looking for a lone female to assault, not for sex, but to drink her blood. The bottom line is a hunger for power. Harry Potter and the rest of witchcraft promises that power, but in the end they discover that Satan is really in charge of the power and only uses it like cheese in a mouse trap. Harry Potter provides a basic initiation into witchcraft for a whole new generation. Imagine what the world will look like when they grow up. Millions of American school children have a new subject in the school. Witchcraft! Through the Harry Potter series, the ancient occult religion of Wicca is being introduced to almost every public school in America. 
Scholastic, the largest publisher of children's books in the world, is supplying Harry Potter materials to millions of school children. Scholastic is also using its unrivaled position in the educational system to flood classrooms and libraries with witchcraft, repackaged as children's fantasy literature. Teachers are encouraged to read the Harry Potter books aloud in class, and millions of kids are being desensitized to the dangers of the occult spirit world. Through Harry's world of sorcery, they are learning what tools today's witches and pagans use. Supernatural imagination, spiritual concentration, wands, brooms, spells, and curses. Warner Brothers' new film, based on Harry Potter, has been called an accurate portrayal of witchcraft, and indeed it is. Christian parents have faced a similar problem for years with the teaching of evolution in schools. They have responded by teaching their kids they cannot believe everything they are taught in school. Now, with the Harry Potter books on witchcraft becoming part of public school curriculum, parents need to know enough about it to teach their kids that the spell casting and other activities of Harry Potter are forbidden territory. Harry Potter's books are about a young 11-year-old generational wizard who attends the prestigious thousand-year-old occult boarding school, Hogwarts. All his teachers are practicing occultists and tutor their students in the dark arts of sorcery and divination, fortune-telling, astrology, potion-mixing, spell-weaving, and curse-casting. Harry's World says that drinking dead animal blood gives power, a satanic human sacrifice, and Harry's powerful blood brings new life. Demon possession is not spiritually dangerous, and that passing through fire, contacting the dead, and conversing with ghosts, others in the spirit world, and more, is normal and acceptable.